Well, hi. Good morning from my shop, and thanks for joining me. I'm. Uh, if you're watching my videos uh, as I post them, then don't be confused. I'm, I've changed radios. I'm back to the um, RCA Victor A25 radio. And what we're going to pay attention to here, since really this radio is pretty much finished, is what about the Magic Eye and the Magic Eye wires? Now, this radio... It's an interesting example of what you might consider a design flaw, although no one expected these radios to be around in the year 2014. Not even in the year 1990, I'm sure they had no idea that these things would be around. So what we're going to look at, and I'm going to call a design flaw, is only a design flaw if you try to keep this set operating for, you know, 60 years. So, but all these similar sets have a similar problem, and I'll show it to you right here, and I'll use the close-up uh, camera to do that. So, okay, so here's the magic eye in the bracket you're holding it. Back here is the socket that is plugged into the back of the magic eye. The magic eye is just a vacuum tube. And here's all this tape I put on around the damaged wires here, which is what we're going to talk about. And you can see the wires just carry on down through a hole and go under the chassis where they make various connections in the radio. So, I got to do something about these wires. The reason is, the tape job I did is just a temporary thing and it looks like crap and I wouldn't want to leave it like that by any means. It's just terrible. I just did that just to provide myself a little more guarantee that we wouldn't have a short up in this area. So i got to do something about that. Now here's the design fly. You see the big tube sitting right here. And that's the uh, rectifier tube. And that's a hot tube. They get quite hot. And it's laid up. The wires here were laid up right against it. As they come by and head down into the radio. And they always get cooked right in this area. And typically they're just like these wires. The rubber insulation under the cloth has completely given out. And the cloth itself is also very weak. I mean, you can see a spot even as I'm talking right here. A good example, if you look right at this spot, you can see the cracks through the cloth. And that's evident all through the wire here. So down in here. Anywhere they've received any flexation, uh, they've given up the ghost. So my options are, I have a few options here, we'll just take a look at them. One of them is, uh, well, just put some more tape on, try to do a better job. That's a crummy option. The tape is temporary, uh, the tape is going to come loose. You can't tape it around these kinds of wires very well. i got no room to work in to uh, apply the tape properly. And as I'm doing it, I'll be wiggling the wires and they'll be falling apart just beyond where the tape is. So it's just a ridiculous idea to think you could tape these. So another option is uh, cut each wire one by one, slide a piece of shrink tubing on the wire, maybe down, down here temporarily, re-splice the wire, slide the shrink tubing up over the wire, shrink it down. Um, you know, you might get a reasonable result out of that, it'd be pretty ugly, um, but I think you'll just end up with the wire all disrupted just beyond the shrink tubing down here somewhere. And. Uh, you know, it, it might even look okay if you did a really careful job of it. But there's a chance the wires are broken right up right up tight to the uh, back of the socket here, and maybe just inside too, we can't be sure. We don't really know. I think you know where I'm going with this. <clears throat> Another problem with just kind of fixing the wires is that they'll continue to be laid up against this tube. Now, there's no way that this radio's got you know, it's going to be operated three hours a day, every day, for years. That's not going to happen. Almost certainly the radio will be operated very occasionally and for short periods. So, uh, <clears throat> further degradation in here. Um, you know, other than just the slow degradation of being there. Not so likely. But, I think, I think it's obvious the only thing we can do here to really make this secure, secure these wires in some way, um, be to replace them. Uh, 
Let's see if I can just get my camera aimed here. Just the way I want it. Yeah, that's not too bad. So what about replacing them? What about that? Whoops, whoops, whoops. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I worked on a magic eye. I worked on a few magic eyes. Uh, they're all pretty much the same in the way they, the way the sockets work on that. So I know what I'm getting into. There's no, shouldn't be any surprises here when I go to do this. Um, I'll have to take the socket off the back of the tube. Probably cut the wires free of the socket. Hmm. Wait, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. The color coding of the wires is pretty questionable at this point. Pretty hard to see. Certainly up above here, it's very hard to see. So, in replacing the wires, I know from my own experience, from me, and this is me who's going to do it, so I've got to pay attention to my experience. My experience is I'll mess this up somehow. If I cut all those wires away, you know, I tag them or make diagrams or do anything at all. If I remove all those wires, I think there's five of them, I then try to install new wires, um, I'm almost certain to get it wrong. And what that'll lead to, <clears throat> not likely to damage anything unless I do something really bad, it's more likely I'm just going to end up having to troubleshoot my own work and uh, have that complication. I really don't want that. I really don't want to get lost. So I think the solution here is to do them one wire at a time. Uh, pull out one wire, replace it in the socket, trace the wire down under the radio, put the new wire in and hook it up to where the old wire was. Completely connect each wire one at a time. I think that's by far my, my best approach. <clears throat> Is there there's a fair bit of room in the hole the wires are going through, so I'm not worried about it not being able to push a new wire through unless I remove all the old ones. I don't think that's going to happen. So I think that's the name of the game. The name of the game is replace them one at a time. I don't have to worry about them getting damaged as I proceed with, with doing this, because what does it really matter if I damage wires that I'm going to replace? It doesn't really matter. Let's see if I can get the socket off here. Okay, let's pull out this tube because it's just going to be in the way the whole time. fling like crazy when it comes off. You don't want that to happen. <clears throat> Let's see if I can... This probably isn't the best idea either. No, well, it's coming off a bit. if I just remove this entirely here. Come on. There we go. better place for my other camera now. Bear with me for a second here.
Okay. So now we're looking down onto it, and you can see the socket. I took the uh, rectifier tube out, and here's the that part, which first thing I have to do is pull out this plastic cover here. It appears to have been damaged a little bit when it was put in. I'm going to assume it's never been pulled out till now. And uh, these are not really meant to be removed. They are meant to go in, never come out. And they can be very fragile. And you need these covers. really don't know any special tricky way of removing them other than to slowly work them out. They're held in by some tabs. Oh, see, this is cracking here. It's very fragile. I'm developing cracks all over the place as I do this. Hmm. Oh, I don't think it's moving. I think it's just breaking. Well, I don't think I can push something through from behind up into the middle here and pop it out. I think. I don't think there's any way of doing that. Holy smokes. I don't like it. I don't like it. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. gotten anywhere at all with it? I don't think I've gotten anywhere. And if I can just get one side coming up, that would kind of release the, the tension or the pressure inside there. Ugh. some other way of doing this. Nothing else is coming to mind here. Seems to be lifting at this end the best. Other parts don't seem to be moving at all. What happens if I break this? Oh, speaking of the devil. Piece of it. Um, now this is locking down the pins. So if you put the tube in, probably it's just fine without this piece here. When you go to take the tube out, the tube will come out and pull all the pins or some of the pins out with it. Is that really even a big deal? I don't think this is holding the pins in place. <clears throat> To some degree, like these two, these two here are larger, so those are the heater pins, and this circle, this, this piece here, is kind of 
Well, let's just say without the piece, you might be able to put the tube in wrong. Put a little bit of effort into it. You probably could. And it's coming up on this side here. That's the side with the little, uh, I doubt you can see it, but there's a little bump here that fits into a uh, key on this piece. So this piece can only go in one way. And it looks like it's not held down quite as securely around that bump. So I'm trying to make use of that fact. There's little locky ridges along here that that the thing has been pushed down past and then locked into. Oh, 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 oh. I'm slowly busting this thing, bit by bit. Oh, man. Now, the last one I took out was made of basically pressed cardboard or something like that. It was pretty stiff, but this is like made of <clears throat> big light or something like that. It's really not a material that can uh, take much tugging like this. I'm not, this is going to take forever. I did not expect this. But uh, I don't expect most of the things that happen, I don't expect. So. Oh boy, there goes another piece. of you is probably yelling at your screen. I know how to get that out of there, Jim. Just do this. But I can't hear you. Look at that. It's just busting it all up. Bust it up. Pull it out of there, I haven't got all day on this thing. I'm run out of patience. There it goes. Okay, so it's come out mostly intact. Wow, this is a very nicely made socket here. This has been made very carefully. It's better than the one I worked on, the last radio. The wires have been brought up. Yeah, let me give you a really close look at this. focus here on the camera. How about like that? Okay. Well, the pins are numbered. The numbers are very clear. You can see the resistor sticking up right through the middle. The last one wasn't fit together ni as nicely as this. This is quite nicely built. So what do we see? We see a jumper here to here. That'll stay in place. You see there's a bit of like a clamp piece. And they fished the wires under the clamp. They may have squeezed it down and then soldered it. Or they may have just soldered it to this point. Every one of them's done the same way. This is the back side of the resistor here, right here. No doubt I'll put a new resistor in too while I'm doing this. So I can try heating this up and pulling the wire out. 
to do that, I, I really want to push all these pins up and out of here. Push the whole thing so it's all hanging out up above. Okay, I don't really want to get a soldering iron down inside this thing. Um, trying to solder these. And really awkward to try to get a new wire into place there. But look at how beautifully done it is. If I do it one at a time, maybe it's really not a big deal. Yeah, why don't I try pulling one of those out? I'll try pulling one out. Which one should I pull on? Just a, just a single wire one. Maybe one of the heater ones to start with. Okay, let's do that. Let's try pulling out one of the heater ones. Now it's coming easy. And the problem is the tape back here is what's bunging it up here. I don't have to be careful now because I'm going to change all these wires. Yeah, look at look at the insulation; it's just coming right off it because I'm handling it heavily. See what happened there? It's just from my fingers squeezing it and holding it there. The insulation just crumbled right off of it. And as I say, any radio that's of this kind of design, and there's lots of them, probably going to have this exact same problem. And uh, the magic eye is a really cool feature, so if you really want to try to. I think I put a lot of tape in here, the way it's going. Yeah. <laughs> They're all bared up now. No turning back, Jim. Yeah, let's have a closer look at that. It's a big schmoz. See if I can pull that one pin right out. There. Now I need a pair of wire, a pair of wires. I need a wire. Oh, what a pile of debris down in here from the insulation. I think I'm going to vacuum that out of there. That's going to go down right in the socket. Whoa. Hey, maybe I could have sucked that. Maybe I could have sucked this piece out with my vacuum. You know, I can cut this wire now, here, at the top, and bring this right out. Fit the wire on it out here with a lot of length. Feed the, the new wire uh, through the socket, back down in the hole. Don't even have to set the pin. Flip the radio over, find out where the wire I'm working on goes, and then reconnect the new wire, cut it to length, and reconnect it. That's, I think that's basically the approach I want to take here. Sounds great. So let me get my uh, helping hand here. I'll cut this guy off. One at a time, I can't go wrong. Can I? Can I go wrong? But now I can see the little tab has been bent down and locks in the wire. But it probably doesn't lock it in all that well. I don't want to bend and reshape these uh, socket pieces here either. 
But I might find, I, I, even if I desolder this, I won't be able to pull the wire out because the clamp is holding it. So I'd have to unclamp it while the solder is liquid. Boy, that's not easy to do. Much better if I can pull that wire out of there, even if I have to kind of force it out. Force it out somehow. Here we go. Let's give it a go. Give it a go. See what happens. <laughs> oh. My helping hand's not so helpful. Came right out. Beautiful. Fantastic. Now, new wire. I want some new wire. I got a pick from this. <laughs> uh, now, there should be a green wire, certainly not the heater wires. The heater wires, what color would the heater wires be? Well, what are they? Uh, it's a pattern with an orange stripe, but I think a couple of these are a pattern with an orange stripe. Black might be good for the heaters. I need to make two lengths. Here we are. That's lots of that's lots of wire. This stuff's plenty plenty heavy. This is actually automobile wire. I can cut this in two. I got lots of wire. Oh my gosh, I got tons and tons of it here. So this will certainly do. And I won't cut it though. I won't cut it till I know how long to make it. So we'll prepare the end here. Prepare for the end. No, prepare the end. This basically is insulated right to the tip here. I don't need much cut off. Can I stick it through? I don't think so. I'm not going to push that back in there without this tab coming up. Uh, won't be the easiest thing to do. Okay, let's give this a try. I'll uh, try and suck away the solder that's there. Maybe I'll be able to get at the tab. The tab may actually be desoldered if I'm lucky here completely. Well, get the wire in. Look at that! Fantastic. As you can see this is going to take a while doing these one at a time. I should do them two at a time. <laughs> oh my! I got to buy some new solder too. I'm almost out. Too. 
Yeah, pretty happy with that. If every one of them goes like this, this will be just fine. I just nip off the excess here. There it is. Now, next part of the plan is to push this wire down through the socket. Just a little fatter. The resistor in there, right in the middle, is taking up a fair bit of space. Maybe I can squeeze it over here. Yeah, replace that resistor. The one I put in will be slightly smaller. I can be. Oh wow. Could pull the resistor right out of there now. I think I'm going to do that. It's going to make things a lot easier. I'll leave the tails on. That's all brown, black, green, one mega ohm. Just what I expected now. Gee, if all these wires came popping out, I might have trouble figuring out where they're supposed to pop back to. I don't want that to happen. I do not want that to happen. Pretty nice, I like it. But clearly the wire is fatter than the others. Than the originals. Okay, from here the wire goes down. this. That's one of the, the pins that's fallen out because without the resistor there's nothing holding that pin there. So I got one pin out. Number two. Pin number two. Pin number two. I mean there are plans on this of course on all, over, all over the place. So I am uh, get myself too confused, I can refer to information to deconfuse me. I'm trying to avoid that. So the black wire is here. Uh -oh, I just see a little complication underneath there I wasn't figuring on. There we go. What is the complication I am seeing? wires come through the hole. You can see the black one here I just, I just put in. And they're tied in a knot. And that makes identification of the wire beyond the knot just a little bit more difficult. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. What's going on there? One, two, three, four, five. 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 One, two, three, four,
two, three, four. Why is it I only see four four wires under here? Took away the fifth wire. What? It's just not Am I going crazy? Okay, so there's. Oh, I know why there's five wires. One of them is mine, the black one. There is only four wires going down there. I'm thinking of the uh, other magic eye I did on the other radio. I'm sure there were five wires. So anyway, you only have four to deal with down here. Hang on while I focus. Focus, focus. Now you're in focus. Well, I can just ring them out, um, to use an old telephone term, which is a technique for identifying wires when we used to have these cables with 50 pairs, 100 pairs, even more. I think they even had like 1,000 pair cables, and somebody had to figure out which wire was which. So they went through a fairly extensive ringing out process, so I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to clip one lead of my voltmeter. To the wire in question. And I'm going to poke around until I hear this sound. We'll know we will have found it. So, is it this one? No. Okay. Is it this one? No. Oh. That could be it there. Let's check them all. Let's see, I think I'm working on a heater wire. That's probably why. I can get a reading of two spots. I'll bet you there's a resistance I can see in one of those spots. I bet you it's zero in one and a little bit of resistance in the other. Let's see. So this one reads zero, or one in fact. And this one reads exactly the same. Let's, let's read the resistance directly. So on my meter, this reads 0 0.4, 0 0.2 ohms. You know, that sounds like zero. This one reads... Point 0.4. Point 0.4 there. Point 0.3 there. Point 0.2. They had to put a knot in it, didn't they? They just, they just had to tie that in a knot. See, if it wasn't in a knot, the wire would be free, which is what I was thinking. Why don't you just trace the wire to the terminal? Easy as can be. 
Uh, not so easy now. Okay, what if we look at the markings on it? This one, definitely, you can see a pattern of markings. This other one, you see no markings. I suspect the other one is going to a ground point. It is. So this one's going to ground. But this other one, okay, see if we can see that up above here. I won't move the camera, I'll just tell you. Okay, so I see three wires that are marked and one that looks straight to ground, or it looks like it has no markings like that ground wire. Let me move the clip lead. Okay, so that's a clip lead now on the wire I think is the ground wire. And that would be this one down here. meter shows 0.2. When I come up here, point 0.4. Okay, I move it back to the real wire I'm working on. See if it's gone the other way now. Point three. Point four. So I think it has gone the other way. So there's a little more resistance right down here. Uh, everything's saying this is the wire here. This one. Everything is saying that. Oh, you know, I just know the potential for getting this wrong is high. So, really awkward working up there, too. Let's see if I can tilt this radio a little bit. Not really. Maybe like that. I'm going to nip that wire right, right at the lug. Pull it out. I'll lay in the black one. Now I want to put a fair bit of slack in this wire because my plan is to cable the wires away from that um, hot tube. So I can leave a little bit of excess wire down under here, really, that's what I can do. I guess you put the knot here so that when you're up here, up above, changing the tube, and as you're changing it, this is happening here. Okay, so as you change the tube, this thing's getting yanked. So the knot is to keep the uh, yanking from yanking straight onto the actual pins. I'm, I'm can probably figure out a different way to clamp the wires, or if I have just enough excess wire up there, what does it really matter? I mean, when's the next time that tube's going to be changed? Way down the road. Okay, I certainly don't want to give myself not enough slack here. That would be really disappointing. A fair bit of generous wire.
It's like showing you the back of my head there too much, aren't I? <laughs> much junk on my shop bench here. One done. One done. 45 minutes doing the first one. Wow. Yeah, I'm just going to carry on with the rest. <laughs> 